The data world, especially from a data infrastructure or best practices perspective, is not that different from Game of Thrones. And when I say that, I mean when Daenerys referenced the quote of Lannister, Targaryen, Baratheon, Stark, Tyrell, they're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, that one's on top, and it spins on and on. And I think I just butchered the quote, but the point is that's kind of the data world. There's just this trend and then that trend and then this trend and then that trend on top and each crushes the other as you know we we kind of go over the same things over and over again and with that comes the reverse etl and if you missed it over the last few weeks we've seen airbyte uh, purchase out group Roo. we've seen rudderstack recently release their reverse etl tool and everyone seems to kind of be jumping into this space and that brings the question first of all what in the world is reverse ETL and why are all these companies kind of jumping onto it? Why do all these companies want to add either reverse ETL component or, you know, become a reverse ETL tool? Now, whether or not reverse ETL is a good term or good practice is something we could discuss in another video. I think what's important in this video to understand is let's answer what a reverse ETL is and why it's useful for companies using it and two, why are these startups and new tooling and concepts kind of coming about. So what is reverse ETL, at least as baseline? And at its baseline, it's just a process that takes data, often from your you know core data warehouse, whether that's an EDW or you know just a standard data warehouse, and then process it, maybe add some logic. Oftentimes it's like segmentation or some sort of targeting, and then pushes it back to often some sort of SaaS or other operational data storage system, like Salesforce, for instance. And this is something I've actually seen multiple times, which is someone, you know, creates some sort of segmentation model. And, you know, maybe Salesforce will just take too long to process it. So they process it externally and then push it back to Salesforce. That is far from uncommon. And I've seen other things where you do like targeted lists, like fraud detection. Um, I've seen that in the healthcare space where often they create a list and then they have to push it back to their kind of system so that their um, providers can look at it and kind of do some analysis to make sure that these are actually fraudulent claims. And then, you know, uh, a lot of adjudication occurs from there. So there's a lot of use cases that have existed for a long time prior, honestly, to the term reverse ETL. And honestly, if you go upwards in the market, especially like enterprise level, uh, Informatica or other tools have kind of had this full process for a long time, right? Like they've, they've done both sides where they've, you know, pulled data and they've also pushed data. And so reverse ETL in some ways is just now getting a term more than anything else. I think that's important to understand is that We've been doing this process for a while. We're now just capturing kind of what it is and what it does. The reason these tools are jumping on the reverse ETL train is because here's the general process of how people use data in today's kind of modern data infrastructure world, especially at like the SMB and mid-level market range. Okay, you pull data out of your data sources. Salesforce, HubSpot, Zendesk, okay, you pull it all out you push it into the data warehouse, and now you give some pretty values, some pretty numbers, some pretty metrics out there, your lifetime value, your ARR, whatever it might be. You know, Maybe you give a list of customers that you should go talk to, but that list isn't really easy to take action on because in the dashboard, and now you've kind of got to do some weird manual process to get it out, and it's not exactly frictionless. So the idea here is, well, what if we took the data warehouse, made it kind of the source, for a lot of these kind of application systems and push the data back after running specific calculations. And thus the concept of reverse ETL was kind of coined because it's kind of what it is, sort of. Um, maybe you add in some more you know, transformations, maybe you don't, but the point is you end up pushing it back externally and you kind of remove the fact that the data warehouse has now become the silo um, and actually start trying to figure out how to use data in your workflows. So you, this is what some people are also calling operational analytics because you're taking analytics that were kind of just more um, standard and flat, you know, you just kind of have them in a dashboard and now trying to figure out how you take them and mesh them with like your RevOps or something similar to that. And of course, if you are a product that already extracts data such as Airbrite or Rudderstack and then stores it into your data warehouse, it makes sense that you now want to add another layer such as reverse ETL into your features because one, a lot of tools that have existed for a lot longer already do that. For example, Informatica, which tends to send more, sell more towards enterprise um, at a much higher price tag, already kind of offers a lot of different modules that allow you to go backwards, forwards with data. It allows you to kind of integrate things. 
So it makes sense that a lot of these more modern toolings, such as Rudderstack, take the fact that they already have event streaming and then implement reverse ETL because now they're managing the full pipeline, right? They're not just managing how the data comes in, you know, in a very kind of event streaming way, but like if they want to process that data immediately and add some sort of context and then push out some sort of action, especially around like, let's say ads, which for a lot of people, as we're kind of going into a very, what feels like expensive and inflation driven market, the more you can drive down your marketing costs and better target ads, the better. So tools such as Rudderstack, which can, you know, better streamline the whole process of, you know, who you should be targeting with what make a lot of sense because now you're not just a cost, right? Like something like this before, like just a pure extraction is a cost to companies. There's no real value add just yet. But if you then add in something like reverse ETL that directly connects the data processing, the data analytics, to the tools of value so that like you're directly, you know, sending like emails or something or targeting, retargeting ads to customers and then directly driving profits via your tool, whether whatever it will be, Rudderstack and so on. Guess what happens? Companies are more likely to keep you on board, especially as we go into, I think, a more restrictive um, environment where people are going to be looking at their budgets more. So from a product sense and a uh, startup sense, it makes a lot of sense that you add stickiness to your product by adding in reverse ETL if you're already extracting data. And the truth is people have been saying this for a long time, the need for reverse ETL to kind of come into other tools. Um, Prokopa said this uh, recently, the CEO of Atlan um, in one of her posts where she discussed, you know, kind of her feelings on reverse ETL, where she said, what I'm not so sure about is whether reverse ETL should be in its own space or just combined with a data ingestion tool. Given how similar the fundamental capabilities of piping data in and out are, players like Evoto Data have already started offering both ingestion and reverse ETL services in the same product, and I believe that we might see more consolidation. And, well, she was right. We are starting to see more consolidation, and I will only imagine that more and more tooling will become kind of more like the tools that we've seen, you know, that have been unbundled over the last decade as they become more bundled because that's just how they're going to add stickiness and, you know, make it more difficult for people to switch over a long period of time. Overall, personally, reverse details are far from new. We have been doing something similar or utilizing tools that have just been far more expensive for a long time. It's kind of cool to see that they've got their own term, but overall, I think what's important is the goal is to drive business value. And I think that's what reverse details are trying to do. I think there's still a lot of stuff we need to figure out in terms of best practices. There's a lot of questions on how we should actually you know, manage uh, the data because you know, now we're turning the data warehouse into more of an operational component and that becomes highly risky for a lot of reasons. So we're going to need to start putting practices around this whole process in such a way to ensure that whatever we build, whatever last mile kind of analytics or operational components we add in, actually add value and don't, uh, in the long run, add technical debt, which I think is possible. It's just going to need a lot of kind of sussing out over the next two to five years. With that, if you want to learn more about reverse details, you can check out Rudderstack's uh, link below. They've been kind enough to sponsor this video, and I've been wanting to make a video on reverse ETLs for my modern data infrastructure series anyway, so thanks so much for them for sponsoring this video. Check out the link below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for all your time, and goodbye.